the blessed time for the Ascension Day worship has come. Today, let us take some time to study the Word of God with the sermon titled, An Instrument of God's Power, Prayer. Today is the Feast of Ascension Day which commemorates the Ascension of Jesus Christ from the Mount of Olives 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, as Jesus ascended from the Mount of Olives, he left his final instruction to his disciples, saying, Be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The disciples wanted to be clothed with the power of God, knowing that the mission could not be accomplished through human strength alone. The most important means and method to be clothed with God's power was prayer. Thus, everyone gathered in Mark's upper room, earnestly praying to God for ten days. Afterward, they resolved to preach the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This event, which took place 2,000 years ago, can be confirmed through the history of the apostolic age. Then, prayer can be seen as an instrument through which we call on the power of God. Knowing better than anyone else that the work of the gospel of God cannot be accomplished by any human effort without prayer, they all devoted themselves to prayer. Without God's help, without the power of God's Holy Spirit, this gospel could never be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The disciples knew this better than anyone else. It is the same with us in this age. We know better than anyone else that for this gospel to be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, there must be God's power in His work. Hence, from Ascension Day to the day of Pentecost, they prayed very earnestly for ten days. Their prayers were to be clothed with the power of God. Through the Ascension Day we are keeping today, God has opened the way for us to pray graciously. Through His profound teachings, God has fully shown us that there is no victory without the work of prayer. Let us turn to the book of Acts chapter 1 together. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the scene where he ascended to heaven. Verse 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. What did they constantly do? Starting from the day Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, everyone devoted themselves intensely to prayer. It was because Jesus himself had taught them that the Holy Spirit which God had promised to grant them would soon descend upon them. Thus, relying on his words, everyone constantly prayed. Verse 15. 
In those days, Peter stood up among about 120 believers. As a result of earnestly praying until the day of Pentecost, they received the Holy Spirit of the former reign on the day of Pentecost, marking the beginning of the gospel work in the apostolic age with Peter's sermon. Before that, the size of the congregation of the early church, who correctly believed in Jesus Christ and truly followed him, amounted to only about 120 people who gathered in Mark's upper room. However, on the day of Pentecost, as many as 3,000 people repented and returned to the arms of God, marking the beginning of the explosive opening for the door of the gospel. Therefore, let us take some time to confirm through the Bible that prayer is always a tool and an instrument hash by which we can call upon God's power. Let's turn to Mark chapter 9. Let's see God's word in Mark chapter 9 verse 28. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. The scene in Mark chapter 9 is very familiar to all of us. The father of the demon-possessed boy came and fervently begged for the demon to be driven out of his son. Although the disciples attempted to drive it out, they were not able to do so. In the end, the boy's father came to Jesus, and Jesus expelled the demon as recorded in the book of Mark chapter 9. Later, the disciples thought, why couldn't we drive it out although we received the power to do so? When they asked Jesus privately, he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. Didn't Jesus want to tell them to pray earnestly? He awakened his disciples to the truth that such miracles can only occur through the power of prayer. Also, let us think about the time of Elijah. On Mount Carmel, he confronted the 850 false prophets who worshipped Baal and Asherah and ate at Jezebel's table. At that time, he first set up the altar and offered prayers to God before securing the victory. He prayed to God, saying, Please allow all these people to realize that you are the true God. When Elijah confronted the 850 false prophets on Mount Carmel, it was through the power of prayer that God granted him the glorious blessing of victory, enabling him to astonishingly defeat the 850 false prophets of Baal and Asherah who ate at Jezebel's table, showcasing such a remarkable display of God's power. In every age, God has provided us with a very important spiritual tool called prayer, through which his power can be manifested. From today until the day of Pentecost, following the deeds of the early church, we will offer prayers to God for ten days, early in the morning and in the evening, according to the regulations of the feast. We should earnestly pray to God so that Zion can be established throughout the whole world. I ask you to pray diligently so that the gospel of God can be preached in all countries around the world. Moreover, please pray for our Zion to be established in various places throughout the world and also pray for your personal faith. When you pray diligently for the church and also for your group and unit, the power of your prayer will never be extinguished. 
Let us pray diligently early in the morning and in the evening, firmly believing that our prayers will become incense and be taken up to the throne of God. Since Jesus clearly said, this kind can come out only by prayer, I believe that all the children of Zion must have faith in prayer. Let us see what Jesus instructed us about prayer, and what kind of results prayer has the power to bring about. Let us find the answer in Matthew chapter 7. Let's see Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. In chapter 7 verse 7, Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. What did Jesus tell us to do in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7? Jesus said, Ask, seek, and knock. What do these three instructions all imply we should do? Doesn't this mean that we should pray? We are to ask through prayer, seek through prayer, and knock on the spiritual door through prayer. What result did he say would come from doing this? Verse 8. For everyone who asks, what happens to everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. He said that it would definitely happen and added a brief explanation. Let's see verse 9. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? When we ask for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God, and for the gospel, won't he grant us good things? In this way, Jesus gave the answer. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. By saying this, he clearly reminded us of the importance of prayer and explained it once again in Matthew chapter 7, along with Mark chapter 9. Let's move on to Mark chapter 11. Why did the saints of the early church pray so fervently in Mark's upper room for 10 days? What did they seek to gain? In the end, by asking, seeking, and knocking, they could see God's amazing grace at work, enabling 3,000 souls to repent in one day. Let us remember this miracle that happened 2,000 years ago. Let's take a look at Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Chapter 11 verse 22. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Everyone, can you believe that this will happen? It is hard to believe if you still think as if what is happening in this world is all there is. Isn't there a video that has shown us that what is unbelievable in the three-dimensional world can be easily and clearly accomplished in the four-dimensional or five-dimensional world? Although it is something God can easily do, none of the switches are working right now because we do not believe. Let's see verse 24. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe. What should we believe? That you have received it, and it will be yours. 
God has already promised us this. Everyone, please ask and seek all things that are just, holy, and true in God. Then, God has promised to surely fulfill everything just as requested. Some prayers will be answered quickly, and there can be some prayers that will be answered after one year or maybe ten years. According to the content of our prayer, God will surely fulfill everything we have prayed for at the most appropriate moment and time for our benefit. And it is in this promise that we must trust when we pray. No matter how much I pray, it seems like God doesn't hear my prayers. Thinking this way makes us accuse God of being a liar. What does it say here? Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. It is a prayer offered up before God. God has given such a sure guarantee regarding prayer. Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. This is what God promised and guaranteed. That is why the disciples needed prayer so that they could be in a position to fully carry out the great mission of God. Be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Through earnest prayers, they asked, please empower us to do such things. Please give us wisdom and faith. Please grant us the power of God. Please help us to become prophets and workers of God who can overcome the devil and not fall into evil temptations. For ten days, they spent their time in fervent prayer in Mark's upper room. Then, when the day of Pentecost came, such power was received. And from that moment on, great spiritual and gracious acts began to unfold. From then on, God's grace and favor, like a waterfall, came upon them and touched many people's hearts. Therefore, do not pray half-heartedly, but believe that God will surely fulfill all the prayers that are lifted up to Him. We must know that it is for our own blessings that some prayers are answered quickly while others are fulfilled a bit later. We must firmly believe that if our prayers are fitting in the eyes of God, He will surely listen to and grant them all. Regarding this matter, Jesus set us an example of prayer, along with many other examples of faith. Let us confirm this by turning to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35, it is written, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place, where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee. In this way, Jesus' daily routine started from dawn. While you live in this world, how do you feel when you sometimes lack energy? Don't you feel that the day is a bit tough and challenging? And you lack the motivation to work on something? Everyone, prayer can be seen as God's power that brings forth spiritual energy. Therefore, let us sincerely pray every day and accumulate the heavenly blessings we wish to receive. 
After the gospel has been preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, the days will certainly come when we will find ourselves transformed according to the prayers we have accumulated. Realizing we have become the complete that God desires and wishes for. Since God said, when you pray, believe that you have received it. Let us offer gracious prayers, prayers that benefit others. Prayers for righteousness, the kingdom of God, and the gospel. Please also pray earnestly for your faith. For the church and for the members in your group and unit. Today's prayers are delivered to heaven and accumulated, and tomorrow's prayers are also delivered and accumulated. Then, one day, all of these prayers will suddenly explode, and there can be 3,000 fruits every day. Seeing that God opened the hearts of 3,000 people in one day, I think Peter must have prayed a lot. You must believe this will certainly happen. We can see that Jesus set an example of prayer, absorbing spiritual strength and energy from early in the morning and thus proceeding with the day's gospel work. For us as well, all spiritual strength is given to us through prayer. Please remember this and offer fervent prayers during the prayer week from Ascension Day to the day of Pentecost. Such powerful work can be accomplished through prayer. How much does God love us? He loves us to the point of death. God, who cherishes and loves us more than himself, tells us to maintain this attitude when it comes to prayer. Let's turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray. And, how should we pray? Continually. Prayer is the energy that gives strength to our souls. We need to continuously receive that energy. What happens to us when we run out of energy? Our physical bodies become weary, tired, and lethargic. It is the same with our spiritual state. Consider prayer as the energy that connects us to God. That is why God does not wish for that energy to be cut off even for a moment. That is why he tells us to pray continually. Whether doing small tasks, big projects, important matters, or less significant activities, let us live each day in prayer without distinction. When we do so, God will surely allow us even 30,000 or 300,000 fruits in a day in this age. Just as Peter bore 3,000 gracious fruits in one day 2,000 years ago, won't he allow us such an amazing work? He will make our prayers explode at some point. Therefore, pray diligently and keep accumulating them. We should pray diligently, believing that we have received everything we have prayed for. God does not ask us to pray continually, to make it difficult for us. God awakens us to pray diligently and continually because he wants us to always feel spiritual energy that is given through prayer. It is all because he cares for us and loves us. When the forefathers of faith and the saints of the early church prayed, didn't amazing things always happen? 
Think about the history of Mount Carmel. Also, before going to Golgotha, Jesus prayed earnestly on the night of the Passover. By doing so, didn't he accomplish the great work of redeeming mankind from their sins? I sincerely ask you to never forget that the power of prayer always precedes any great event that takes place. God does not avoid responsibility or fail to answer our prayers after saying, just believe unconditionally. He has made a clear promise to all mankind. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. God said he would reject prayers that are wrongly directed towards our greed or meant to indulge our own pleasures. Therefore, I ask that this prayer week be truly dedicated to praying in accordance with God's will. The instrument of God's power is prayer. Prayer is also the energy of our soul. If prayer is cut off, the soul is no different from a body without energy. It cannot exert any power. Since there is a great need for prayer, let us pray earnestly with all our heart during the prayer week for 10 days, so that the hearts of all people in Korea, across the whole world, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, will be moved, and all people will return to Zion, repent, receive the forgiveness of sins, and return to the kingdom of heaven. Hoping that this great and glorious miracle will occur through our earnest prayers, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.